tell me a little bit about this monastery. Tell us about like what your day to day routine was like. Okay, so you're quiet till noon. No one talks, which I loved so much. Uh, you wake up really early, like four thirty five. Mm-hmm. Go to the zendo, which is the like chapel basically of the mm-hmm. monastery. It's like this beautiful room. Everyone's quiet. You meditate for like two straight hours in the morning. Just sit wow. there. You don't move. No one moves. Do you get to eat? <laughs> what? Do you get to eat first? What about coffee? Do they have coffee? Okay, I always got coffee first because I. You're not allowed to yawn. You're not allowed to fall asleep, and you know it kind you're of not allowed to yawn. You kind of can't really stop yawning. Like yawning happens. <laughs> the older monks, like I, I would see it almost happen to them sometimes, but then they like swallow it. They'd be like, <sniffs> and I was like, okay, I guess like, it's like. It's just an old tradition, but I guess it's like rude to yawn. And I'm like, okay. I get that. And also it's contagious. Right? But I'm like, it is 4 a.m. So. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. But yeah, I would have some like tea before so I could wake up a little bit. Because it sucks when you like want to meditate for a a long period of time. And then the whole time you're just like thinking about other stuff. Like it's nice to have a little caffeine so you can at least give it your best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) But yeah, then we would do chores and the chores could be anything from like cleaning to working in the garden and then we would eat lunch and we could talk and then we would do more chores and then we would go to like a lecture or something and then meditate more in the evening go to sleep at like 10 so not a lot of sleep you got to get a nap in there during the day I did um and then there's like a silent retreat once a month at this place so there's like a week of every month where you're like totally quiet Mm -hmm. and it's not just that you're quiet I didn't know this but they like put paper over all the mirrors, all the clocks. You couldn't make eye contact with anyone. So you're like totally in your own zone, like all the way in your own head. Hmm. Uh-huh. The eye contact thing is a little bit weird to it's me. It's strange, the clocks right? clocks and the mirrors, I get uh-huh. that. The eye contact, I guess, is like, you're just like, I know that it's like silence is like speaking, but you still, I feel like, communicate with other people with your eyes, you know? Yeah. So maybe that's part of it. I'm not sure. But yeah. Yeah. So what, I mean, obviously you really enjoyed it. Yeah. What about that appealed to you? You know, I I am so drawn towards like simplicity and I feel like this part of me I've like finally come to terms with, but I've always just like wanted to be a person that existed like a hundred thousand years ago, like a monkey, like not in this modern day society. And I've like, I feel like I've finally yeah, come to terms with the fact that I live in 2024 and there's nothing I can really do about that. But who knows? Maybe it's like a past life. Maybe it's just some weird personality trait of mine. But I don't know. I And I've always been drawn to like a non, non-traditional non lifestyles. So yeah, I just, I loved being there. It was like one of my first experiences where I didn't feel like I had to be like the funniest person or the smartest person in the room. Like everyone's just there to like better themselves and be spiritual and mm-hmm. relax and yeah learn stuff so it was just a beautiful environment it was a great community like it's really hard to find community I think in this day and age and it was like everyone there's there for the same purpose you're like all on the same schedule and yeah yeah it's really beautiful <laughs> interesting so what are your views on like religion and spirituality and God I mean do you believe in a God I, I definitely believe in a higher power I think that religion is kind of like a weirdly bastardized like human way of trying to understand something that is extremely mysterious by nature. Mm -hmm. And I think anyone who claims to know what that great mystery is or what its name is, I'm just like skeptical of a bit. Mm -hmm. So maybe the institution of religion I find kind of suspicious. Mm -hmm. But I, I am really spiritual and I I think that all religions have a kernel of like really beautiful spirituality to them it's just they yeah it can get a little weird when humans try to like act like they know what's going on mm-hmm. you know and use them to control other people exactly and like benefit themselves yeah which we see a lot of yes so how do you incorporate spirituality into your day-to-day life um i i really try to mimic a lot of like the monastery in my day-to-day life like i'm really i i live alone and i love my solitude and I love journaling and I still meditate a lot and just I I really want to have like a very clear mind that is um, able to like receive big ideas and big messages, you know, and it's 
it's really hard to do that when you work in social media primarily because I feel like social media really, um, yeah, it's just very cluttering. Yeah, it's a lot of noise. Yes, exactly. So constantly trying to seek that balance because I definitely, I mean, I love dopamine as much as the next person. I love a good scroll and I find it so addictive and um, I really try to like minimize that in my life, sometimes successfully, sometimes less so. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's definitely an interesting new challenge that we face. Yeah. You know, because before, you know, the worst thing that you could do was like watch a lot of TV, but even then you'd have to be home to do that. You'd mm. have to be present in the world when you were out in your car or out at the streets or at the grocery store. And now it's like you can be it, disconnected everywhere. from the world at all times. So true. Hello, my amazing listeners. You know how much I love bringing this podcast to your ears every week. So if you're looking a way to support the show and get some fantastic perks, I've got just the thing, my Patreon page. With plans starting at just $5 a month, you can be part of our exclusive community. Your support not only helps to keep this podcast going, but it also unlocks some really cool bonuses. Imagine getting access to the live streams of my interviews as they happen. You'll be right in the middle of the action, seeing all of the unedited moments. But that's not all. As a Patreon member, you'll also get exclusive bonus content. I'm talking extra mini episodes where our guests answer questions submitted by you. Plus, you'll have access to my fine art photography and behind the scenes videos, giving you a sneak peek into my creative process. And guess what? If you opt for a discounted year long membership, you'll save even more while supporting the show. Longtime subscribers even get free HRU merchandise as a token of my gratitude. So want to join us? Head over to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered and become a part of our growing community. Your support means the world to me. Let's make this podcast even better.